French Quarter, Friday on evening. A little music and a little talk. That's how many people in this country have entertained themselves since colonial days. That's the foundation of one of the most successful shows on television today. And here to tell you about Hee Haw is Bob Brown. Bob, Hugh, the program was canceled by CBS 10 years ago because its ratings weren't high enough in the big cities. But instead of quitting, the show's producers went out and sold it to 220 local stations, one at a time. And now it's the most popular syndicated show in television with its own interesting history. It used to be the kind of strange obsession you didn't admit to if you watched it, even though you were in the company of around 25 million other Americans. You probably either love it or you hate it. It's one of those feelings that strikes you from the moment you hear it begin. <laughs> is now into its 14th season on television. And although there's always fresh cardboard for the cue cards, its basic formula has never changed. The key to my heart. There's country music. There are beautiful girls. And there are jokes your grandparents might have heard from their grandparents. Empty Arms Hotel. Do you know what happened in 1756? No. What happened? I don't know either, but I'd sure like to because I'm in 1755 and I never get a wink of sleep all night. <laughs> I think what we're doing is really sort of spoofing all the areas that have ever been connected with country music. The girls sort of represent the farmer's daughter, the traveling salesman kind of thing. Uh, the old corny jokes that everybody can say, boo, yes, too, you know, but they do it laughing. Knock, knock! Who's there? Sean! Sean who? Sean on, Sean on horse. <laughs> Where Hee Haw came from offended a lot of critics when the show first went on the air in 1969 as a summer replacement for the Smothers Brothers show salting its country humor with fast-paced techniques borrowed from Laugh-In. The critical reception in urban areas ranged from poor to outraged. <laughs> now, here's what the New York Times had to say. Hee-haw is ghastly, and Nashville should not hesitate to bring suit. <laughs> who reads the New York Times? <laughs> Producer Sam Lovello, who lives in Los Angeles, had to explain himself to his friends. I recall going to parties in, on the West Coast, and I, I, I felt so out of it that uh, I'd, I, I'd get to these parties and wanted to hide behind the drapes or in the closets. It comes as a shock to those of us who live on both coasts, but there's a whole world between New York and Los Angeles, and a whole population out there apparently quite hungry for this kind of entertainment. Retired Washington Post critic Lawrence Laurent may have been the only big city critic who liked the show. If you were to, to trace the evolution of the type of humor that's on Hee Haw, how far back would you go? All the things that have always bothered the farmer, the doctor who doesn't know what he's doing but overcharges you, the used car salesman uh, who can spin inside a dime in his logic, uh, junior samples out there knocking down the price of the automobile every 15 seconds. The, the things that have always frustrated the, the man who lived on the farm. This is an element of the humor in Hee Haw. Another thing that makes Hee Haw special to its viewers is the cast. The list could fill a small encyclopedia of characters and performers who've been popular for decades. Aside from headliners like Roy Clark and Buck Owens, there's banjo-playing humorist Grandpa Jones, who since the Depression has been disguising himself as an old-timer, and now, finally, is one. When you walk up to a jukebox and you slip a nickel in, you can... And singer Roy Acuff, a performer so popular for so long among country fans that Japanese troops singled him out for insults when they attacked Americans on Okinawa and shouted, to hell with Roosevelt, to hell with Babe Ruth, to hell with Roy Acuff. Got me down, got me down. 
At the age of 79, Acuff has instead gone to Cornfield County as a Hee Haw regular, who can tell you that many of the elements on the show derive from the idea of self-entertainment in rural areas that were isolated from big cities and entertainment centers. We entertain at night, we entertain out in the cornfield. We do some things that they're funny. We always are entertaining because we have nobody to come to entertain us. And there's Minnie Pearl. Her gentle but man-hungry character has been a fixture on country showcases for more than 40 years. Every time my boyfriend comes over, my daddy insists we keep the light on in the parlor. I better speak to your daddy. You know love is like a photograph. It has to be developed in the dark. <laughs> they are performers who have attracted and held the enormous loyalties of the country fans who watch Hee Haw and they have perpetuated one of the favorite sayings of Grand old Opry founder George Hay, keep it close to the earth. They say you all look like you're having such a good time, and they like to get into that world where there's, there's no cancer, there's no medical problems, there's no political unrest, there's no war, there's no death, there's no killing. It's just foolishness. For 10 months out of the year, the Hee Haw set is packed away, and the stars are off doing other projects, movies, concerts, road shows. But once in the summer and once in the fall, for four weeks at a time, this set at Opryland in Nashville becomes Cornfield County, USA. Yeah. When the cast gets together, it's just like summer camp. With producer Sam Lavello as the chief counselor, and just as much going on behind the cameras as in front of them. No matter how long you've been a star, George Goober Lindsay has been on television since the days of the Andy Griffith show, Lovello seems to have spies to ensure that nobody gets too philosophical. The honesty of the humor here in Hee Haw is it. I mean, uh, it's, that's my... Although Hee Haw has never taken itself too seriously, it has been getting some serious notice lately. The Wall Street Journal did a front page article on the show in 1981, calling it spectacularly successful. That refers to the money it makes. TV Guide called it the slickest assembly line in television. That refers to the way the show is produced. Each of the shows, for example, has cornfield jokes in it. All the cornfield jokes for the whole season are taped in one day. The same is true for each of the other regular Hee Haw features. Like the knock-knock jokes, the musical numbers, and the post office. When the cast and crew leave Nashville, director Bob Boatman takes the tapes to Los Angeles, where they're edited into 14 different Hee Haw shows. It's like building a, a freight train. You want the coal car, you put in the coal cars. Then you want the box cars, you put them in. And pretty soon you put on the caboose and you got a train. And that's the way we build the shows. It's a living cartoon, Hee Haw. You know, all the colors and everything. It's like opening up the Sunday paper when you're a kid, going, you know. And because it has all those rich colors. And look at the set. It's remarkable how little fantasy dreams. An unexpected snow fell on Paris, France today. The dream embodied by the mythical Cornfield County is so appealing to its fans that the Hee Haw set is one of the main tourist attractions at Opryland. Fans also know that they're likely to get a glimpse of one of the country music stars who were guests on the show. Kenny Rogers. Loretta Lynn. Tammy Wynette. Conway Twitty. Did you know your love had taken me the high To the peaks of mountains reaching to the sky And the artists who sing the songs are frequently accessible to the people whose lives they sing about. Faye Shadan has come from North Carolina for the last four years to see the show tape and to fill her autograph book with the names of the new stars and the old ones like Merle Travis. Isn't that fun? That's what country music's all about. <laughs> Hunting, golfing, and fishing, and swimming, and running around with all kinds of women playing dominoes and shoot dust. And look whose names could have been added to Faye's autograph book as guest stars on this year's show. Paul Williams. And Sammy Davis Jr. out there in gold chains and bib overalls with Buck and Roy and the whole Hee Haw gang. What are Sammy and Paul doing in Cornfield County? 
Well, just as country music has put city people into big hats and cowboy boots over the last few years, hee-haw has also become downright fashionable. Last few years, uh, you have people approach you and, and uh, they say they watch the show and you, I used to think, oh, sure you do. Uh, but now I know for sure that you do because they know what's going on on the show. But one of the questions you don't ask about hee-haw is what's new. Not much is. And it's keeping a lot of people employed. Talking around this town. And they started doing that back when country wasn't cool. A lot of the things they do on the show go back a long way before they learn to put it on television. Yeah, that was great. Thank you, Bob. Well, next, the strange story of a man in the moon and 13 stars and the ugly rumor that bedeviled one of America's biggest companies. Right after this. For the special times, for the happy times, for what's been, for what will be. For all the years and all the tears, for what you mean to me.